good in fact what are we on good afternoon everyone guys thank you for joining me again it seems like a while since i've done one of these videos these type videos we've just been working so hard on getting the studio up and running you know um everything's just been a nightmare the weather's a nightmare my roof is a i, I live in a relatively old house the roof always leaks so we've just been battling on with day-to-day -day, uh problems and you know dealing with those but what I want to talk about really quickly before we go live tonight is this chicken law that has that you know that comes into force tomorrow. It just seems to me that every day the government are taking more liberties because right now, well, let me read. If I'll go onto the share screen here, guys, so you guys can see what I'm actually uh, talking about. Basically, the government have come out now and they've said that if you keep chickens, you have to register them. Now, this to me sounds absolutely insane. There's like people on who have allotments who have like, you know, I'm guessing a lot of chickens. What, do, where does this go? And I'm going to tell you where I think, where it's, where they're, what, and I'm going to tell you what they're telling you it's heading towards. And I'm going to tell you where I think it's going to end. Bird keepers, are you registered on the GP poultry register? From 1st of October, a new legal requirement for all bird keepers in England and Wales to register on the GB Poultry Register comes into force. Find out how to register and why NFU supports this new law. So basically, if you own a chicken or if you've got chickens or and you lay and, you, you know, like we used to in our house, we used to have um, we used to have chickens and we used to get eggs from those chickens. But now you have to register them. Now, the government are saying that this is, guys, and I do apologize about the lighting. Um, we're, we're not quite there yet with all, getting everything set up. But the government are saying that this is, you know, to, to fight things like bird flu, to keep people safe. But the reality is, I don't, what I think is happening, I think that more and more people are growing their own food. More and more people are, you know, you raising chickens and, you know, and having, you know, keeping and raising chickens. And I think the government have realized that they're missing out on some taxes. So I think this is where it's going to start. It's going to start by, you know, <coughs> have, have you registered your chickens? And then it's going to be, right, you need to pay this much money to register your chickens. And for whatever way, they're, I see this as a way to pull money out of people. I think it's very telling that the government don't want the people to have the ability to produce our own food. It's kind of like one of the only God-given rights that you, that, you know, that the government should. I mean, what's next? Taking away the, the right to breathe oxygen, the right to drink water. To me, it just seems like government overreach. And again, you know, they dress this up and they say... You know, they say that it's to stop, you know, it's to stop the new virus from spreading or it's to stop X, Y and Z. But let's just look at what's been happening the last couple of years. In fact, you know, what? let's not even go the last couple of years. Let's look at the last few months. We've had this, you know, this proposed inheritance tax on farmers, whereby farmers. So it used to be that farmers, their land, their machinery, you know the what they used to produce food when the dad or granddad died whatever and they passed that on to their son that didn't get taxed because you know what we kind of need all the maximum amount of field space to grow food so what the government have come in and, they've, and they're proposing i don't know if it's passed yet but the government are proposing that right if you're a farmer and you die and you leave your field or whatever to your son now a part of that field essentially belongs to the government so you can literally see the you know imagine a farmer now he's farming his field and his far and his farms and his fields this big granddad da, granddad or dad dies the farmer now can only you know can only can only farm this much because that much belongs to the government and do we think the government are going to be going out there and planting seeds in that field absolutely not the government will probably want rent and it's just you know it's disgusting it really does seem to me every day and every time one of these laws gets passed, every time there's a piece of legislation that, you know, uh, encompasses the food supply. Why does it always seem like somebody's trying to control our food? You can't actually see, but like, hang on, like round, like, hang on, 
like there, just over there. If, 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 the, if the light was different, you might be able to see over there. But there's literally a field over there, and it was all purple one year. And I was like, why is it all purple? And the farmer had grown flower. When you get closer to it, it's not just purple. There's lots of different flowers in there. But the field was full of different different flowers. It just happened to be the like purples with the dominant color. It turns out there's more of an incentive now. It's more profitable for farmers to grow flowers in the fields than food. I mean, how is that even a thing? We can't eat those flowers. You know, we can't eat those flowers. It's something called rewilding. And those of you who've been following this channel, you know that this year has been an absolutely diabolical season for growing food in the United Kingdom. Right back early, like January, February, March, and I think April, maybe mid-April, mid we had one of the wettest seasons on, on record. So the farmers, they couldn't get out into the fields and they couldn't plant the seeds. You can't plant these seeds afterwards because there's just no point doing it because they won't grow in time. We was on a live stream the other day. We had a farmer come on and he said, listen, you know what? My crops this year, we we are harvesting less than half what we normally harvest. He also said the farms around him, they're not even going to bother going and harvesting their crops because it will cost more money for machinery to go and get those crops than it would do, than they would get back off them. So there's no point in that. So time and time again, you're seeing this war on food, war on food production, anything that, you know, that sustains us. We're seeing it getting overly taxed, overly regulated, and nothing good ever happens when we, you know, when things get over overregulated. It was only last night we were saying that Keir Starmer wants to take back control of our lives. Is this how the government are doing it? Are they taking back control of our food because we can't be trusted? To produce our own food i don't know i just you know i i see we used to keep chickens in our um you know we used to keep chickens in our garden we used to have six chickens and that gave us more than enough eggs that we could you know we we, we literally couldn't eat all the eggs and that didn't cost us anything and that's you know not only didn't it cost us anything because you know they used to they used to go around in the garden and they used to peck things or whatever they do but we, we didn't we, we would take like bits of scraps of food down there but that was giving us food for literally free food. And that, you know, so that's money that we wouldn't be paying on tax. Now, I think what the government are doing, I really do. I think this is the early stages of the government wanting to tax people who are growing food on their own property. Can you imagine the state? And, and again, guys, this is me just speculating at the moment. Can you imagine the state of dystopia if... I decide to grow a cabbage in my garden and then the cabbage tax, I get I get a cabbage tax. Or then, you know, so how do you police these things? Are we going to have a state of affairs where people, for example, at the BBC can do X, Y, and Z? I'm certainly not speculating. And they don't see prison time. And then John and Mavis, who've got a couple of chickens and they've not registered them, they're, they're going to the gulag. Three, four months ago, I would say that's absurd. But the reality is, the way we're moving and the direction we're heading in the United Kingdom, I wouldn't take it off the cards, guys. I really wouldn't. Don't forget, we are going to be live again tonight at 8. We're going to be talking about um, will Vladimir Putin launch a nuclear attack? There's lots of information coming out in that sphere. Lots of opinions, lots of opinions one way, lots of opinions the other way. We're going to discuss all of that. We're going to discuss a lot more. We're going to discuss the state of the United Kingdom, the state of the world. We are going to discuss everything and anything, guys. You guys put things in the chat and we'll talk about it. Anyway, guys, I'm going to mag to grid. I'm going to get changed. I'm going to go to the gym and I will see you guys at eight. Don't be late.